Hello, I'm Justin Ross with Fluke by Medical and Race Safe, and we're back with our Fluke by Medical Infusion Pump Analyzer Series. Today we're going to work with the Fluke by Medical IDA 1S, and we're going to go ahead and hook up to an infusion pump and show you that setup and take a few tests, uh, specifically a flow and occlusion test. So let's get going by starting talking about the things we're going to need to do this test. So on my desk here, you're going to see I have a one liter volume of pure distilled water. I have my bottle of Micro 90 solution. I have one, two stop cocks. We'll cover why I might want two here later on. Since the IDA 1S is a single channel device, I need one drain line. And of course, I'm going to need a collection canister. Uh, my IV test solution bag. And what I did is I just used a IV bag that I had uh, used on the floor and I drained it out and slid it open and flushed this out really well uh, with, uh, with clean water. Now I used some distilled water and flushed out that stuff, so I have that. I have a priming syringe. I have a syringe I'm going to use here to measure my Micro 90. And then I have my uh, test set for my infusion pump. This is going to change. Depending on what infusion pump, infusion pump you have, you're going to need to have the right cassette or IV tubing for that pump. So you're going to have to grab your service manual for your, for your infusion pump and make sure that you have the correct cassette. Some infusion pumps require that you use a special calibration set. So I'll make sure that you have the right set there. Uh, the one thing you see that I don't have on my desk is my operator's manual for my IDA 1S. And the reason is, is because I like to use the online version. So if you go to flukebiomedical.com, go to products, go to the IDA 1S, you can actually pull up the operator's manual right there in front of you. All right, and that's the reason I like to do that is because that way I make sure I always have the latest version of my manual. Also on there, I can also look for any helpful videos on how to set up my infusion pump or other devices. So, all right, let's start setting this up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, before I make a mess, I'm gonna put my collection canister in the drawer here in my desk. You always want your collection canister below the surface of your infusion pump. You don't wanna be pushing fluid uphill. It's gonna cause a back pressure on the line. So again, make sure your collection device is below the level of your infusion pump. All right, now I will connect my drain line here to my infusion pump and put this right down here into my collection canister. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix up my test solution. <clears throat> you should always use pure distilled water with Micro 90. This ships with your IDA 1S, and if you follow the instructions on the bottle here, it says use 20 millimeters, 20 milliliters of Micro 90 per liter of water. All right, if you use this up, you can also purchase more through Fluke medical.com or call your local rep. So let me see, this is five milliliters, so I'm gonna need four of these per liter. One, two, three, Four. That makes 20 milliliters. All right. Set that off to the side. I put my cap back on this before I manage to spill it. And something else you might want is a nice clean rag because if you're like me, you're inevitably going to drip water all over your test bench in this process. All right. Since I've already used this bag, I'm going to connect the test cassette to it before I fill it up so I don't get water all over the floor here. So I'd already opened this up prior to the video. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this in like so. And I'm gonna make sure that my cassette is closed. There we go. I'll put the safety valve closed on this. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and fill up my test bag here. I don't want to overfill it so I don't make a mess. I can always add more later on. I know I'm here, I'm gonna squeeze my bulb and make sure that I have about halfway up on my drip chamber full. Now I'll suspend this for my infusion pump, uh, my IV pump bag. Here we go. My IV pole. All right, there we are. Now we're connected to our IV pole. 
Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to follow the instructions on the bag that the cassette came in on how to prime the cassette. So in this case, I'm going to remove this safety clamp. I'm going to put this in my collection container and I'm going to open this valve and allow the fluid to come in, turn it to make sure there's no air bubbles and chase them back out and down the cassette and then close the valve. All right, there we go. Now, let's talk about these stopcocks. You can use any stopcock, but this is the one that comes with the infusion pump, and I like these ones better. They have a little leader line. That gives you a little bit of distance uh, from your connection to the infusion pump to uh, work the valve. So, the ID1S has two ports, an occlusion port and a flow port. So you need to make sure you're connected to the right port for your test. We're gonna talk about a little bit of a tip here later on, but for right now, we're gonna do a flow test. So I'm gonna connect this stopcock to the flow port like so there we go now my infusion pump i also want to have my infusion pump on the same level as my infusion pump analyzer for the same reason if i raise this up in the air the pressure sensor in my infusion pump is going to be higher than the pressure sensor here so for every foot or so of height i raise here it's going to put that much water column onto your pressure sensor and your infusion pump analyzer, which can throw off your readings. So always make sure that you have the pressure transducer of your infusion pump and the pressure transducer of your infusion pump analyzer on the same plane. So that's why I have them both sitting here on the desk like this. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my test cassette to my stopcock. And since I'm gonna do a flow test, I wanna make sure that it goes straight through that way. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to need a priming, cassette, uh, a priming syringe. So I'm going to take my syringe and fill it up with some solution. There we go. Make sure there's no air bubbles in it. And I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the stopcock on my infusion pump analyzer, making sure that it's shut off. All right. Get into those two later on. So, now what I would do is I would open up my service manual for my infusion pump um, and get the exact settings I'm supposed to use. Follow that service procedure exactly. Even if you use an alternative maintenance program, please reference that service procedure and make sure you have the right flows. It could be set up to calibrate at a specific flow rate. We're not gonna talk about specifics, we're just going to grab a rate today because again, we want you to open that service manual. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my infusion pump and put my cassette into it that we've already primed there we go and i'm going to go ahead and select a rate all right so for today we're just going to select 150 milliliters an hour all right and enter and then we're gonna do a volume of 10 milliliters. Again, we would reference that service manual. There we go, 10, no secondary dose. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our IDA1S started. So we're at our home screen, press to proceed. We're going to do a flow test. This is the first thing it's gonna ask for is the control number. So this will be the identifier on your infusion pump. For today, we'll call it test. And then the number sign, one, two, three. You can see this is a touch screen. And next. Next, we're going to set up our IDA1S. We're going to go ahead and hit flow. And our control number. And our control number is going to be that new unique identifier on your infusion pump. So for this one, let's enter as test. One, two, three. We can put our flow rate in, so let's go ahead and do that, of 150. Um, the operator name, that's me, JSR, and my volume of 10. All right, and next. Okay, now it's gonna say to prime. So I'm gonna take that stopcock, and I'm gonna shut off the infusion pump line. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and push my syringe and prime it up. And you'll see my line goes from red to blue. And we're gonna go auto start, turn this back to the, the line. Now, the reason I chose auto start is because I'm doing 150 milliliters an hour. If I was going for a small rate, like through a syringe pump, maybe five or 10 milliliters an hour, I would go ahead and use the manual start. Okay, so start there and start here. This started, it sends to flow, and this is started. All right, so we're gonna wait for a few minutes. This is approximately a four minute test. And uh, we're gonna make sure that it's infusing. So right here we go. Here's our average flow rate. Here's our instant flow rate, percent deviation our volume and the elapsed time of the test. Pretty cool, huh? So at this point is when I would start getting my next IV pump ready, cleaning it up, uh, do the electrical safety, maybe my prior pump, catch up with my paperwork while this is running. This is a beautiful thing about using an infusion pump analyzer is it frees you up to do other portions of the tasks while your infusion pump analyzer is taking the readings for you. So we're gonna cut out here for a minute and we'll come back uh, about halfway through the test and see what our readings are. Okay, we're back. We are about uh, two minutes and 42 seconds into our test. Uh, so far, we have flowed 6.75 milliliters. And over here it says seven milliliters. Oh, there, 7.2. So really close. Uh, this is a great way to check your, uh, your test information as you're going. So we have our average flow rate of 152.82 milliliters. Our instant flow rate of 156, 2.02% deviation. So we're gonna go ahead and sit here and uh, let this test complete, and then we'll move over to our inclusion pressure test. All right, our test is wrapping up here. Um, we're approaching the 10 milliliter volume limit we set, 9.71. So any second now we should alarm and complete. All right, our pump has finished, so we're gonna go ahead and pause the pump and save our information here. So we're at 10.09 milliliters at 152 uh, milliliters per hour. So we're gonna go ahead and save that test information. And the next thing we're gonna do is move on to our occlusion test. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off my stopcock so I don't have any fluid come out. I'm gonna go ahead and move my stopcock to the upper port for occlusion. All right, and I'm going to disconnect my priming tube. So I move my I moved my valve over to the priming tube to shut that off. Go ahead and close this so it stops alarming at me and reset. Now again I'd reference my service bingo but since I don't have it here I'm just picking an arbitrary number. So I'm going to move my settings and my rate I'm going to drop way low. I'm going to drop down to 20 milliliters an hour. Well, we'll go 30 since I ever shot it. 30 milliliters an hour and hit enter and we'll pick 20 milliliters. Again we're going to do our occlusion test here. Enter. No. Secondary. Alright so now on the IDA we're going to go to occlusion and our rate is now going to be 30 so we'll clear that and we'll hit 30 in. Next, disconnect pump from occlusion inlet and press zero. So what I did is I opened up the stopcock from that occlusion pressure port because we need to zero out that pressure transducer. So shut off the flow line. So now we're open to air and hit zero. All right, connect pump to occlusion inlet and press start. So now, I'm going to close that port. There we go. And I'm going to press start on the IDA and start on my infusion pump. And it's going to start to build pressure. Now I need my service menu again to see what pressure it should alarm at. So here we go. 0.6 PSI, 0.7. So here's our instant pressure and here's our peak pressure. So after it spikes, if it drops off, we'll catch that peak pressure here. And for these 
occlusion pressures, the slower the flow rate, the better. That way you're not shoving so much fluid in it that you don't get an overpressure line before it actually trips. So you want it to have some time to build up nice and slow. Okay, 4.57 PSI, we should be getting close to that occlusion pressure. We're a minute and 16 seconds into the test. Okay, there we go, we the infusion pump alarmed and our peak pressure was 5.93 PSI. Took a minute and 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and press end and save that data. Here we go, save. Now, something I want to tell you about the ID1S. This can be operated on battery, right? So if you're running on battery, a little tip here is when you're done with that test, relieve the pressure from that pressure transducer. There we go. So we open a stopcock, you saw some of the fluid come out. That relieves the pressure in that pressure transducer, which is going to extend the life of your battery. All right, we'll just go ahead and silence our infusion pump here. Take this out. All right, so now here's a bit of a tip or trick for you. Something I like to do when I'm testing my infusion pumps, it takes a lot of time to connect and disconnect these ports on here. So what I like to do is I like to get a second set, right? And then the second IV bag. And on the, this set, what I would do is I go ahead and run one for my and I would run one for my flow and run one for my occlusion. When you do that, you just have to make sure that you have the correct pressure ports open and closed. I like to have my second stopcock and I would attach it down here to flow like such. And I would go ahead and put my priming syringe on this one because this is the one you have to prime. And I'd run a second tubing set into here. And then you just have to make sure that you have the correct tubing set. It's pretty easy to figure out when you don't because it's going to occlude in a big hurry and not have a flow or vice versa. So this is a nice little trick that you can do. Run two sets. Maybe they label the cassettes, put a tag on it so you know you have the right one in here, one that would say flow, when it says occlusion. Then you're not connecting and disconnecting and getting fluid all the place. You're simply just changing out the cassette per the test. And again, when you're done with that occlusion test, make sure you open that stopcock and bleed the pressure off that pressure transducer, which will make the battery in the ID1S last longer. Thank you very much for joining us in our infusion pump analyzer series. We hope that you check back at flukebiomedical.com for more product information and more helpful videos. Thank you very much and have a great day.